we're back. We're moving into our final segment for today. And this time we get to get the full scoop, the behind the scenes of what it was like uh, to be a contestant, a contestant in Miss Universe uh, as we're joined by Janelle Frazier, our very own Miss Universe Belize. Good morning. Good and morning. Welcome. And welcome Thank back. Thank you for having me yes. again. Yes. <laughs> so it's so great. I mean, it's we're great. It's great to see you. Thank um, you. I was asking you right before we went on air when you got back, and you said you took some time to kind of relax. Right. And now we get to talk with you. So I want to just dive right in and hear from you just what your overall uh, synopsis of the experience of the Miss Universe pageant was like. Uh, well, let's start. Um, when I got off the plane, mm -hmm. of course, they had people waiting for me, and they were just as excited as I was. Um, they made sure that my luggage was there, uh, and then they transported me to the hotel, and that was where it really began yeah. because they had photographers there. So even though I took two days to travel, I needed to be camera ready. So I felt like from then the competition began began yeah. and then it started to get more intense yeah. as days progress what is camera ready makeup ready this smiles is such ready a question. <laughs> no, I, I, I totally get you okay go ahead yes yeah. so like i said I, I traveled for two days um i unfortunately you're not allowed to carry liquids um on the airlines that's carry on so i didn't have any makeup on me so I was like, guys, you wow. have to take me as I am. <laughs> Two days ready. But I still had a big smile on my face because yeah. I was so happy to be there. What was it like on a personal level? You know, sometimes we yeah. get ourselves in situations and we, we do have that uh, stereotypical, I have to pinch myself, this is really happening. Mm -hmm. For Janelle, not Miss Universe Police, but for Janelle, when you arrive in Thailand and you have people and cameramen, what, what, what did you feel like? I felt um, like it was surreal. I was so happy. Uh, not a lot of people get to be there. I'm one of um, almost 30 women who have represented Belize at Miss Universe. And I, like I said, I felt such an honor and it was a proud moment for me. Um, and I couldn't stop smiling. Yeah. What <laughs> thoughts were going through your mind? Winning. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah, I was, no. and um, just trying to learn from these women. Yeah. Um, it's ninety-three other women. Unfortunately, I think Miss Sarah Leon, mm -hmm. she had some struggles getting to Thailand, um, and she could not compete. So mm -hmm. it was one less person. But still, learning from these women, um, I was trying to soak in the moment. How much did you make it? about friendship uh, versus competition because some people i mean my only exposure to pageants is what you watch at the central right. movie right so <laughs> right. yeah some people are friends and some people are really out to get you yeah surprisingly you know i was warned i was told uh, in the past girls have been very malicious very rude and so i went with my guards up thinking that okay well it's a competition these girls will try to get you but you know I was very surprised that the girls were very nice. Mm -hmm. We had no arguments, mm -hmm. um, and it was a good experience for me, especially the girls from the Caribbean. Uh, <laughs> stick together, yeah. Yes. yes. What, what, what did you learn about yourself through this process, mm -hmm. different from, because when you went in, when you were leaving, uh, it was a very, I felt very proud, uh, because you seemed to know exactly who you were, mm -hmm. and that always glows. And we saw some consistency, right. even in terms of the outfit that you chose. I was extremely proud Thank you. Of, um, of your choices there. But what did you learn more about yourself through this process and through the, com the contest? And what did you learn about your country through this process? Ooh. What did I learn? I think I learned to trust myself a little bit more because I won't lie. You get there and it's women who are considered the best. Um, and you come from such a small country where oftentimes you're not recognized mm -hmm. and you're trying to figure out, am I not good enough? Mm -hmm. And then you have to reassure yourself that you are good. You were sent from your country because you were the best. Um, so I, I learned to believe and trust myself a little bit more. Um, in terms of my country, what I learned, 
Uh, I think I learned that we, we are very supportive. We can be a little more supportive, but we are very proud. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Kevin spoke of how he liked the outfit. Loved but, it. Um, Loved. We got we got to talk about what it was like from your end when people had mixed opinions right. about some of your outfit choices. Some people loved it, and some people really didn't. Did you see those kind of comments? And, and what was your reaction I, to it? I did see them, but I, I didn't feel any type of way because um, what people don't see are the behind the scenes where mm -hmm. other women are wearing the same thing, and you, you try to figure out, OK, so why is it that I'm being bashed for what I'm wearing, yeah. the fashion that is currently in, uh, what the fashion symbolizes, because one of the dress I actually wore um, to represent a Miss Universe that had passed away, it was in memorial of her. Um, and I try to figure out, okay, so why can't I wear it and other people can wear it? Yeah. So, but it was fine. How I do you learn to brush off those things? Of Cause, course. Because you're in such a critical time. Of you, course. You have the pressure, and I'm sure you have the pressure of the expectations of Belizeans. And there's just this thing that it doesn't matter how many people say I love you, it's the one person who says something yeah. bad that you focus on. But how did you learn to, to remove that? Or I had to learn that it? before I left. Okay. Before I actually went to, uh, competed in the Miss Universe Belize competition, okay. I had to learn to figure out what is constructive and what is just being negative. Mm -hmm. So when I got there, it was, it was easy for me. Yeah. No, I, 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 I compare um, Miss Universe to Belize in sports. Mm -hmm. You know, we go there and, you know, or Jaguars or baby Jaguars, we play against people who are professionals. I mean, right. from then a picnic, from then come out of them, my womb, then got to a crown, and then they walk and they teach them for walk, and they have professional classes, and they've had so many hours and, and hours. And plastic surgery. <laughs> yes. No, you. And, true. And you go there, genuine, naturally beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is just the way God did it. Right. Um, but, where in the process you said, man, if I had a little bit more time, if I had a coach in this area, I would have taken, or this technique, I could have. Are there areas where you could have seen where, you know, if you could have added to enhance what you naturally brought to it, in terms of just the basics that you missed just because you were not a career um, pageant woman? I think my organization did what they could have done. Um, unfortunately, they did not receive a lot of financial support and I think that was where we were lacking but in terms of being on the standards of the girls I I was neck and neck exactly I, I was I don't want to brag but I think I was better mm -hmm. in some areas yeah. so I don't think um, we're lacking when it comes to uh, sending representatives we may be lacking in resources and the support from the country yeah. did you feel prepared though did you feel that you were I Ready felt, to yes, compete? definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I said, when I got there, the, the only thing on my mind was winning. Yeah. So I, I want to go back to some special moments. We'll, we'll dig deeper in just a bit. This, I, I, I want to go one. back to this some of the favorite. special moments that really stood out to you from the pageant. Okay. Um, well, you, honestly, when I stepped out for the first time in my costume, ah. I think that was when it really got real because we were... We were going to different events, and it didn't really feel like a competition, competition. But when we got on stage for the first time, <laughs> and you saw the people, and they were cheering, and you knew that home was watching, then you said, OK, yeah. this is very, very special. So this was the moment. Where yes, it when all... it started to get real for me, and I was so happy to show up. Behind stage, everyone was so excited to see this costume. People yeah. were giving compliments. So it was beautiful, and you you did an interview where you were previewing that you were going to have a, a costume with the jade head. Yes, and, and jade is so special in Thailand. So wow. I felt like I was connecting with the Thai people. So it was yeah. a really good costume choice. Every every year um, in these competitions there's a look that they sort of looking for. Like sometimes they don't want the cookie cutter Barbie mm -hmm. looking thing. They're looking for something special and unique. Um, did, did you feel that or sense that, you know, um, you didn't have to worry about all of these people who have the plastic surgeon and all these things because just being you was mm -hmm. in fact giving you an edge. Right. I didn't feel a pressure because I feel that once you're yourself, um, 
you should be able to shine. Um, and I think we all have, it's, it's okay to alter yourself, but once you're confident with, what, what, with who you are and what you present, nothing should matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious to like, okay, you, you did very well. And after you finished, you, you watched the remainder of the, of, the, uh, of the contest. Well, we really didn't have time. Um, oh. One of the things people don't get to see is when you get off stage, you have to run upstairs to a dressing room and you don't get to watch the entire competition. Wow. Um, you get to see parts, but I would have loved to, to see the entire competition. I, yeah. I saw it after. Yeah. From, from the night itself, a big night, mm -hmm. what moment were you most, what you were anticipating the most? Being called in the top 20, I think I had done what I was supposed to do. Yeah. Um, and then I think the, lo the, the last um, spot that was called was Central America, and I, I, I was <laughs> fingers crossed, maybe it's Belize. Yeah. So I was really anticipating How did you feel moment. when they didn't call your name? Uh, I was sad. I was, yeah. What went through your mind? Mm, you put in the hard work and you feel like maybe it was not enough. Mm. Um, but then you have to bounce back because you have to come back on stage. Yes. You have to smile. Yeah. So. Yeah. Did you think of people back home or it was kind of just your moment? I did. For just a little bit, I felt that Belize was cheering for me, they were excited, um, and I know there were people who were saying, if she doesn't place, we're not going to watch it, so I definitely had them in mind, and I think they felt the disappointment that I felt. Yeah, and your bounce back, what did you say to yourself to bring yourself back into the game? I said, okay, so maybe there's someone in the audience who would like you and who could offer you some type of job, modeling job. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can reach out to other women. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay, you have to smile when you go up there. Are you gonna turn the opportunity around? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is, is there anything in terms of, this is a male perspective question. Mm -hmm. Is there anything <laughs> That's that- That's okay, <laughs> we, know, we know you're a man, don't worry. Is there <laughs> anything from, in terms of preparations or walking or beauty tips that you're gonna take outside of the competition and apply it to your own personal life in terms of your regular um, after your reign is over. This, this is one of the things I'm always going to do, whether or not it's, a, I don't know what it is. Is there anything that you want to take from this experience, which is actually a professional something, yeah. and put it into, incorporate it into your personal? Definitely, habits? I think because you're exposed to so many people from different cultures, you get to appreciate your own country and your culture as well as other people. I also um, realized that once a queen, always a queen, and yeah. you must be able to carry yourself in that manner. Yeah. So um, posture, the way how you speak to people, respect mm -hmm. and manners, it takes, it, it takes you a, a long way. So I would definitely take that with me. Yeah. Who did you connect with most at the pageant? Well, we were uh, in groups. Yeah. So um, in my group, my roommate was Cayman Island. Mm -hmm. I also had Japan, mm -hmm. Mongolia. Yeah. Um, these were very, very nice women. Yeah. They were willing to help you at all times. And so I definitely connected with them since I saw them every single day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to just, because every pageant, there's controversy. And so this year's controversy was definitely around uh, the comments made by Miss USA mm -hmm. that was captured, I think it was Snapchat or Instagram, um, mocking essentially non-English speakers. Tell me what, what it was like to be one of the delegates and to have this be the buzz of the pageant. Did you agree, disagree, do you understand? Um, well, I, I was not around when it happened, so I wasn't aware until I start until I started to see it um, on the internet. Yeah. Uh, I was a little surprised, but it may have been blown out of proportion. Mm -hmm. um, I, she was very good friends with Vietnam and the other women, yeah. and it's an unfortunate event. Yeah. 
But one thing I must, if I could advise anyone, it's the Miss Universe is women from all over. English is not the first language mm -hmm. and we should not expect people to only speak English. I went there speaking English, but I still had an accent. So we should be open to, like I said, different cultures yeah. Yeah. and ethnicity and just be mindful of what you say. Sometimes it's not what you say, but how you say it. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I, because it's, it's, it's really the impact of the words you choose right. and how you choose it. And also where you spread a message like yes. that, putting it on social media. How do you, it goes how, do you viral. Yeah, how do you encapsulate those kinds of lessons and use it when you encounter all other uh, women, children, or when you go into schools to keep it as a part of the message? I think in general, in general, we need to see as a lesson to be learned. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's not what you say, but how you say it. Um, oftentimes, what you say can be considered uh, being a bully. Mm -hmm. You have to be very, very mindful of what you tell people because sometimes people take it very, very personal. Yeah. Um, we have people who commit suicide because of words. Mm -hmm. So I would just want to tell every single person to be careful of what you say. In, in terms of support, um, I've heard over and over, like past queens, after they finish, um, say, you know what, I want to make sure that I help the next queen um, mm -hmm. who's going to participate in the pageant. I'm going to help her to make sure she's prepared. What was the level of support from past queens in your venture going over? I got support. They were, I think, in the entire country was supportive, but the queens who have experienced that uh, being on stage at Miss Universe, they were they were there to say you're doing a good job. Remember, it's not about the placement, but it's about what you represent as a person and as a country. Yeah. So I was glad to that's, to have them. That's nice. Yeah. What was the most nice. useful thing that they told you that like really helped you at the pageant? What really helped me? Yeah. I think just being myself yeah. uh, and enjoying the moment. Oh. It goes so fast, really, really fast, and you want to go again, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> and and doing, doing over, because that, in terms of, you, say, you, you know, you want to do it again. What would you do over? What specific thing do you say, man, like, oh, come on, just oh, <laughs> rewind, press. What would I do over? I think I did pretty well. Yeah. So... I don't think I would do anything over. But to relive something, anyone, any one moment all over again? I think the swimsuit. Just because it, really? it took me, it took so much courage for me to encourage myself to get on stage at Miss Universe Belize and then on a stage where millions of people are watching you, judging every single thing that you did. So in that moment, I yeah. felt very, very confident and secure of what I represented. Wow. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I never thought of that. Yes. So there you go. You can relive it by watching yeah. it over <laughs> and over. I, mean, I, I get so excited every time I see it because you don't get to hear what people are saying in the yeah. crowd. And they were like, oh, believe. <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you, how do you, what is the sequel to a high like that? How do you how do you come down? Um, you don't. I'm not, I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> You're still floating. Yeah? Of course, you don't. I think years from now, I'll look at these clips and I would say, "Wow, I was actually there." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, Janelle, let's 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 talk about what we need to do as a country. You you've uh, experienced this journey as few women have. Mm -hmm. Um, we've had so much controversy, but there's just one thing I keep on, we, we've said many times on the show, we love pageants. <laughs> we really love them, and we love watching our Belizean people be represented there. Um, and you use the example of Baby Jaguars. I always use one of my favorite persons, Ky uh, Kaina Martinez, who's kind of just, she's a trailblazer on her own. If there's anybody who can show you how you can make yourself without having any infrastructure in place. It's our own Olympian. And that's what we ask our women in pageants to do. We ask them to put themselves forward, compete locally, and then go on to an international stage that, that takes a lot more preparation than we can ever offer. What do you think we can do differently 
this year in preparation for the next queen who will have this experience? I, I, I mentioned about resources. Um, let's be real, we're, we're competing against countries who have millions of support, whose government, they have funds specifically for pageantry. And I think um, if we get together as a country, even though we're so small, I like to compare myself to our, our country to Jamaica, who's also very, very small, but they're very inclusive and supportive. Um, and if we could get to that point where no matter who we send, we, we may not like the representation that is sent, but it's important to realize that once we have someone there with the, con with the sash that says Belize, that person represents the entire nation and yeah. we should be very, very supportive. Um, and we should try to do what we can to get them to that point where they're, where they're confident enough to say, well, my country did what they were supposed to do. Yeah. The rest is not up to me. Your, your reign doesn't end until somebody else um, yeah. takes your place. And so you have a bit of time now. Mm -hmm. you, you, you entered this competition with a platform. Um, what is your plan in terms of your reign as to where you will take the eyes of the nation, but more importantly, the hearts and ears of this nation. We started off the year kind of in an ugly way. You present the beauty of this country mm -hmm. to the world. Um, would, uh, is your platform going to change, going to include more? Where do you see you making the biggest impact on this country that you represent? Uh, well, my work as the Miss Universe Belize does not end. Um, the, hard, the hard work actually just begins. Um, I, just this week, I presented a wheelchair to a woman who I felt was very in need of it. And actually, when I leave from here, I go to HealthAge to, to give them some um, walkers and items that they need. So as a Miss Universe, your work never really ends. Um, and it's my job. I did have a platform. I still have a platform, gender-based issues. It's so mm -hmm. important. Mental health, very, very important. And now I can actually focus in those areas um, and do little things like this as well because mm -hmm. I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be um, restricted no. to yeah. just one platform. No. As a Miss Belize, I should be able to go around the country and address every single issue issues that we're facing. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest issues right now is that, I don't know if you're following the first segment, is as you know, to the world, we're going to make a statement come April 10th, mm -hmm. the ICJ. Where are you with that? Where can I, can I talk to my queen about where she is on that issue? I think for me, I'm still in the process of gathering information um, and, and then I would be able to make a sound decision based on the information that I get for myself. And I would not try to impose my own um, opinions on that matter. I would encourage every single person to take time to learn what's happening. Um, it's a very important issue. And we are trying as a country to inform us inform the, the population of what's happening. So if there's a forum happening, if there's a pamphlet with information, yeah. read it, read it. It's very, very important. And then based on the information that you have gathered, yeah. you would be confident enough to know that once you make that vote, it was the best choice for you and yeah. for your country. And in terms of where do you feel that women in Belize are? I, you know, that's a, that's a heavy question, <laughs> but as a representative of our country and of the beauty of women in our country, you surely it must give you some introflection, but also a comparative sort of eye. Where do you think women are in Belize and how do they continue to move forward? I think we're taking the steps that we need to take to really build each other, because we have to start with e each other first. Mm -hmm. And then we work our way to the men and then to the entire world to be accepted for who we are, the flaws that we have. Um, so I am proud of women today. Um, 
especially in a scene like Miss Universe, because I have to bring the relation to that because yes, I've experienced absolutely. it, where in the past people have spoken, spoken up negatively towards competitions like those being sexual. And we're taking a stand and we're saying, no, we're more than just physical appearance. We also have a, a brain. Yes. We have personalities. Absolutely. So we yeah. are taking the stand that we need to take. And I'm proud. Nice. What would Ms. Universe Belize, Janelle Frazier, tell young and impressionable 13-year-old Janelle? What would I tell them? I would tell them that your life is not set in stone. It's okay to have one dream, and then years after, you could change that dream. Um, like I always say, not everyone will support you and believe in you, but it is your dream. And you should be proud of that moment. Um, and just go for it. Go for it. What? You know, one of the stories I always give about you is that I was coming down from court and you walked right by. Really? Yes, you walked right Ooh. by. And my... See, you had an admirer. <laughs> um, well, I, 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 I admire the fact that your humility, I mean, because, I mean, you would think, you know, you'd be like stuck up and whatever. <laughs> no. and, I still um, take the bus sometimes. <laughs> and, and that was my thought process as you walked by. I mean, this is exactly the, 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 the human touch of mm -hmm. what the Belizean is. We're very hospitable people. Mm -hmm. We're down to earth. What you see is what you get, and you fall in love with what it yes. is. Um, my question, uh, my final question is really, where do you see yourself going in the future? professionally, personally, because Miss Universe is a, is a universe in itself. Mm -hmm. It's a, almost an altered reality. At a, some point in time, Janelle has to sit down and say, you know what, where am I going next? What's going to feed me? What's going to make me happy in the long term? Where is that place for you? Well, I am now working on myself. So I enrolled in school. Nice. I am now attending Galen. I'm taking criminal justice because that's my field. So in the future, I see myself. Um, Lawyer. Being, no, a forensic psychologist. <laughs> we don't have any yeah. in Belize as yet. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Maybe there's someone who's going to beat me to it. But that is my ultimate goal. And so I'm taking the necessary steps to get to that goal. And it starts with education. So Awesome. <laughs> well, we look forward to uh, seeing what will take place next, but we appreciate you coming in and Thank sharing this experience me. with us. Thank you, guys. Good luck. We're going to go ahead and take our final break, and when we come back, we'll have our wrap-up, so stay tuned. <laughs>